Hello, uh, welcome uh, to a short uh, general interest uh, uh, seminar. Uh, I'm Ji Baolai from uh, Western University. And today we're going to talk uh, about numerical uh, libraries for scientific computing. We're going to have a quick overview of some of the uh, commonly used numerical libraries for solving various problems. Uh, in particular, we want to focus on some of the uh, areas, uh, linear algebra, uh, uh, fast Fourier transform, uh, ODE and uh, PDE solvers, uh, numerical integration, arbitrary uh, position, and the multi-purpose uh, uh, libraries. And not necessarily uh, in that order. Uh, we will talk about what they are and how they can be used. And uh, this is by no means a complete survey of the numerical uh, packages. Instead, we would like to present <coughs> to the audience uh, the pointer to the information that you can look up at your own time. So uh, let's have uh, an overview first. When talk, talking about the scientific computing or numerical uh, methods, a number of uh, categories come to uh, our mind. Uh, despite the, uh, the nature and the complexity of the original problems we're, so, uh, we're solving, uh, they all boil down to these categories. And uh, further, uh, they can uh, boil down to these fundamental problems, linear algebra, uh, Nonlinear equations, numerical integrations, ODEs, F of T, random numbers, uh, or Monte Carlo methods for simulations, and the special functions. So first, uh, let's have a quick review of uh, some of the aspects of uh, linear algebra. And these are the, the common uh, uh, linear algebra operations. Quite often, uh, we encounter uh, them. In, uh, when solving our physical problems, uh, solving, for instance, uh, solving linear systems uh, using uh, uh, LU decomposition. Um, this is uh, especially true when we have a, a dense linear system to solve. The, uh, the method to use to solve a linear system or the direct method is to, uh, to use LU decomposition, which is based on the Gaussian elimination. Um, to find to solve at least the uh, uh, square problems uh, uh, using a QR algorithms and to compute the eigenvalues or to compute a generalized uh, eigenvalue to, to solve the generalized eigenvalue problems to compute a singular value of decomposition and to solve a large linear system a large linear system or sparse systems through iterative methods using Krylov <laughs> subspace method with uh, a variety of uh, different uh, preconditioning. And if, if you're solving a linear, uh, a dense linear system, uh, you, you know you should never uh, uh, write your own code or copy uh, any source code from textbook, not even numerical recipes. And the best library to use is uh, LAPAC and its variants. And it's originally uh, written in Fortran. Now, C++ APIs have been implemented for those who write in C++. But personally, I'd recommend to use the original APIs just so that it's easy to, de uh, to debug. The C++ APIs are, are wrappers, just like a multi-layer adapters, uh, which could make uh, debugging uh, difficult if anything goes wrong in between those layers. If you're solving a sparse uh, system, you're better off using uh, existing packages. And uh, path C is one of the such uh, sophisticated packages that can be used uh, to solve sparse systems on both uh, single core or multi core or distributed memory systems. And if the problem is too large to fit into a single machine, uh, like those from the final element analysis using millions or billions of the nodes, then using a distributed memory. Uh, solution is the only way or practical way to go. There are a number of uh, building blocks that one can use for such tasks. But once again, uh, using an existing software could be uh, uh, much easier. And we have most of these uh, packages uh, installed on the Sharknet. You can take a look at the, uh, the listing on the Sharknet uh, website under uh, facilities and the software. And finding eigenvalues and eigenvectors is another important task that many of us uh, face. Uh, although LAPAC uh, has many routines for solving uh, eigenproblems, there are a few alternatives 
uh, uh, in particular to consider, for instance, uh, RPAC is widely adapted. Uh, it is used in MATLAB, Octave, and R. Uh, a few uh, features that make uh, RPAC uh, stand out. One is it can uh, compute a number of eigenvalues specified. So, you, it, it, so you, if you don't need to compile all the eigenvalues, and then you can tell them how many eigenvalues you want to compute. Um, and also, it does not depend on a particular matrix vector storage uh, format, which makes uh, it possible for a uh, uh, user to, to compute uh, eigenvalues or eigenvectors uh, for, of those uh, sparse matrices. It uses uh, what is called the reverse communication interface. Uh, it is a mechanism that allows <coughs> you to use your uh, uh, own matrix format. So what happens is uh, when it comes to matrix vector operations, uh, it gives the control to the calling sequence, and uh, you can use whatever uh, the operation, whatever the format that you uh, uh, you use to to perform the matrix vector operations. And after that is done, the control is handed back to the uh, the uh, this R packet package, and then continue. So uh, uh, this is a very powerful uh, feature that not many people uh, are aware. Uh, it makes it possible for people to, to compute uh, the eigen, to, to solve eigenvalue problems uh, using a different uh, matrix vector storage format. And also nowadays, uh, uh, RPAC has a C++ interface, and also it has a parallel version. Uh, on SharkNet, we have a, a RPAC installed. In addition to that, uh, there's another uh, package called the Feast. It is a fast, high-performance eigenvalue uh, solver, and uh, and also it, it it uses the reverse communication interface to uh, to allow uh, the use of a different uh, storage format. And uh, most importantly, uh, Feast can compute all eigenvalues, eigenvectors for a given search interval. That is a key feature. So if you want to compute a number of uh, eigenvalues of interest, you can specify the interval, and then it will, it will just compute the, the eigenvalues within that interval, that, which is uh, sometimes very useful. And uh, other than that, there are a few other uh, packages to consider. Part ESO is a package for solving dense and a sparse linear systems. Uh, there are a few other things. Um, uh, Intel uh, mass kernel library uh, has the linear algebra libraries included, and the new scientific library and uh, others. Uh, they all have the LaTeX included. Now, uh, a few uh, simple examples of using a LaTeX. First, let's take a look at solving a linear system. Uh, let's say we have a linear system A x equal to b. Uh, we solve the linear system using an LUD composition. Uh, which uh, uh, <coughs> breaks the uh, uh, the original equation into a two uh, a triangular system using a, a four uh, uh, using a a, a a backward a forward and a backward uh, uh, solving procedures. A byproduct of using a decom uh, LED composition is it can be used to compute the determinant if we ever want. From linear algebra, once we computed the matrix A, uh, decompose matrix A into a, a lower and upper triangular matrices L and U, determinant is just the modification of a three determinants. And uh, because we got a once on the diagonals of uh, uh, L, which is the lower triangular uh, matrix, and the determinant of the permutation matrix of P is just, uh, uh, of in fact, a, a negative one to the power of row uh, permutations, uh, which is uh, recorded uh, after the call to the subroutine stored in the array. And we get the determinant of the original matrix immediately. So now, uh, finding the eigenvalues. Uh, this example. A quick way to test a library is to uh, compute a Wilkinson uh, test matrix. 
For instance, the MATLAB has a special command to generate the Wilkinson uh, matrix, by the way. Uh, this matrix uh, looks like this. It has some interesting uh, properties that we uh, will look uh, uh, we will look at uh, uh, later. Now, often we want to solve uh, uh, generalized eigen uh, problems of this form as well, so which involves two matrices A and B, and this can be done by LAPAC uh, routine. But we can separate the generalized eigenvalue problem into a standard eigenvalue problem and a linear system. On the slide, it shows the procedure. And we, uh, uh, <clears throat> we, separate, original, uh, we separate the solution to the original uh, problem, equation one, into two equations. One is a standard uh, eigenvalue problem followed by a linear system, which is the upper, uh, involves the upper triangular uh, matrix U, uh, just the two equations at the bottom of the matrix. And it turns out that the original generalized eigenvalue problem, uh, if we separate them into two parts, and uh, after prof <laughs> we profile the implementation of part one and the part two, it shows that uh, 55 percent uh, is spent on part one versus 45 uh, percent time on uh, part two. I just quote the, one of my colleagues uh, said in the past. Uh, and that's the transformation from generalized eigenvalue problems to a standard eigenvalue problem using a new diag uh, algorithm and OpenMP. Uh, <clears throat> the speed up uh, for seven. 700, uh, 7,000 by 7,000 matrix, 1,000. It's 1,000 times faster compared to the, uh, uh, the old, uh, original uh, ACE pack routines, that are, which cannot be paralyzed because of data dependencies in the Chalitsky uh, album. So sometimes uh, if you do a little uh, uh, mass and transform problem into uh, an easier one, that another can, uh, can uh, speed up the, the computation. Now, uh, numerical com uh, computing uses floating point uh, operations. IEEE a single position gives uh, accuracy uh, uh, to about the seven digits, and the double position uh, gives us about the 15 uh, uh, significant digits. But sometimes higher position or arbitrary position are wanted, for example, in high uh, energy physics. Now let's uh, uh, take a look at the back, the, the Wilkinson uh, uh, test matrix that computes eigenvalues. If first glance at the, the eigenvalues computed by the MATLAB uh, seems to suggest that they have, uh, that has two, uh, uh, twin eigenvalues in pairs. Uh, on the slide on the, on the right, uh, if you see the numbers in red, it seems to suggest that we got uh, uh, two identical uh, eigenvalues. Now, uh, the, the question is, are they really uh, uh, equal or just uh, uh, some uh, numerical or artifact? So we want to use a higher position to compute again. So there are two uh, factors uh, to consider. One is the uh, GNU uh, multi-position package GMP, and the other is uh, multi-MP uh, uh, fun, uh, the Fortran or ARCRAC, uh, arbitrary position package and develop it. The, the Lawrence uh, Berkeley National Lab. So uh, uh, in this example, uh, we computed the eigenvalues in higher positions using uh, the package MP1, uh, developed by David uh, uh, Bailey of Lawrence of Berkeley uh, National Lab. On the uh, right hand, on the left hand side is the uh, is a driver, uh, is a test driver. It calls a ACE pack routine subroutine. IMTQL1, which is solves the eigenvalue pro <coughs> uh, problem. And uh, on the right hand side, uh, we just took the uh, ACE pack routine and uh, made uh, three changes. We just made a, a, a changes in three lines to replace uh, the building uh, data type with the MP1 or multi-position data type, and then we are able to compute 
uh, the eigenvalues to arbitrary digits. And this example shows the, uh, uh, the simplicity of the Fortran uh, superior to other languages for scientific computing. So here uh, are the results. On the left uh, are the eigenvalues computed by a MATLAB or using a LAPAC uh, using double position. On the right, uh, we're using a 40 digits. And then we repeat it again using a 40 and a 60 digits. And we can see uh, the two uh, seemingly ident identical eigenvalues are actually different after uh, about 40 digits. So next, uh, let's look at the nonlinear equations. For solving nonlinear equations, there are a couple of packages. And path C, uh, path C uh, is on the top uh, that uh, we would like to recommend. And uh, you can also uh, look at uh, some other uh, packages listed here. We'll look at the uh, code example uh, later for solving uh, nonlinear equations. Uh, for solving nonlinear equations, we linearize the nonlinear equations, and then we have a uh, our two equations. One is a linearized equation involves the Jacobian of the original function and followed by a, a correction uh, term. And uh, the linearized equation is solved using Karloff subspace method <coughs> uh, through iteration. Next, uh, let's move on to optimization. And optimization is another area that where numerical computation is in heavier demand. Uh, a couple of packages to this sort of here. Uh, the first is the asynchronous or parallel pattern search with a derivative. Uh, it is uh, developed by, at the uh, Sandy National Lab. And uh, this package is succeeded by uh, Hops Pack, uh, stands for a hybrid. Uh, uh, optimization, uh, optimized uh, a parallel or pattern search package. And also you can use uh, a GNU scientific library GSL and a few other things. Uh, let's take a look at an example of a data fitting. Data fitting is not, is one that can be, well, uh, 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 it's falling to this category as well. Uh, this is an example of a nonlinear least squares problem. Uh, in this nonlinear least squares fitting, we have a three pra parameters, A, B, and the lambda, to uh, fit a, a set of uh, observation data with uncertainty uh, sigma, given the uncertainty. And uh, the goal is to find uh, the parameters A, B, and the lambda to, uh, to minimize uh, this equation. And the two methods that are commonly used, uh, both work well. One is the Lundberg uh, Markov uh, method, which requires the computing derivatives, and the other is uh, a dozen. Uh, it does not require a derivative. It, it uses a simplex search method. And both methods are available in the GNU Scientific Library. And here is an example using GNU Scientific Library. Uh, that uses the, the first method using a derivatives. Uh, by the way, the GNU Scientific uh, Library shares some similarities in common with the other modern numerical software packages. And it follows a design philosophy of a data abstraction, and this can be seen in the use of a many OPEC uh, uh, objects. Now, um, you know, just ignore the, uh, the, the source lines on the left. On the right, at the top, we define, uh, we, uh, we, <laughs> we use uh, an object of the app, which is uh, an object for solving this uh, linear fitting a problem. And uh, we install the, uh, the functions and the Jacobians into this uh, solver object, the app. And also we define the number of uh, parameters, P, and, uh, and we feed in the, uh, the, the actual parameter, uh, the, the array of a parameter. And then uh, the main part is the uh, iteration. And in this iteration, we just repeatedly call the new uh, uh, solver uh, until, uh, until it converges and then to find the solution. 
And the second example uh, uses the, the Nelder uh, meet simplex method to search the minimum. Again, uh, it uses the GNU uh, scientific library. Uh, similarly, it, it defines some uh, objects, and the main part is on the right hand side. It includes uh, a, uh, a iteration. And within the iteration, we just repeatedly call uh, the GNU uh, GSL mini, uh, uh, multi min to solve the, the problem. So we won't go uh, through the details of every uh, function calls here because we don't have time either. And there's no way, in fact, to go through the details of uh, a slide of both of the source uh, lines or mathematical equations within a minute or, or, or two. So all we need to know uh, here is to get the, uh, those pointers to the information so that we can look at uh, later. So next, let's move on to uh, numerical integration. Uh, for computer integrals, the uh, analytic functions, uh, trapezoidal rules and the simple rules are perhaps the most familiar ones to us. For one-dimensional integrals of uh, well-behaved uh, in integrands, in our quadrature rules are very efficient. But for higher dimension, multi-year dimensional integrals, the practical approach are uh, uh, Monte Carlo methods. A couple of packages. Uh, Quad pack, that is a package, a Fortran package for using the uh, Gaussian quadratures uh, to calculate the uh, integrals. And the GSL, the GNU Scientific Library, uh, implements uh, both a Quad uh, pack, uh, re implement the using uh, the Quad pack, and the Monte Carlo ma uh, based method. Now, uh, I want to point out that the uh, Quad pack uh, uh, retains. So are only for one-dimensional uh, integrals, and for uh, uh, higher uh, multi-dimensional integrals, uh, you need to use the Monte Carlo uh, based method. And the Cuba, uh, that's another uh, library for multi-dimensional integrations on a, a, a hypercube, a unit hypercube. Uh, it has a unified interface to Monte Carlo based uh, methods. And also, it has a, a, a one deterministic uh, a, a interface to a one deterministic uh, method, which uses a quadrature. It has the C and C++ interface, and also Fortran and the Math Mathematica interfaces. It is very easy uh, to uh, to use, and the parallelization is also made of it. possible. And here's an example. Um, want to compute the, uh, the integral of an uh, auxiliary function on a two-dimensional uh, unit grid using Cuba. Uh, to just to verify that, we uh, use the MATLAB function. Uh, by the way, this, fun uh, this uh, uh, integral has an analytic solution, so we can uh, verify that. And uh, the under, uh, we, we just listed the source code and the Fortran source code for using a Cuba. In uh, calling a routine, we just simply just call the interface Cuba. We passed in uh, two important uh, uh, parameters, the two important arguments. One is the integrand, which is the function you define uh, for f. And it passes out the integral, which is the result. And, uh, and here, uh, we define the function and the uh, integrand in red. Uh, it is basically just, uh, uh, it, it translates the mathematical expression into a few lines. So we, uh, we, we input the integrand into the, the calling uh, sequence, uh, the function cuba, and it, it just uh, generates the integral, the results for us. Uh, next, uh, let's move on to uh, ODE solvers. Uh, there are a couple of ODE packages that we would like to, to recommend. Uh, Boost, a C++ uh, library. By the way, the Boost is a C++ library that contains a lot of uh, uh, packages. Uh, ODE int is just one of them in the numerics uh, of the, the Boost library. Uh, Intel ODE libraries, so Sundao and ODE pack, and also uh, uh, GNU scientific library. 
Now, before we uh, look at the examples, let's take a, a quick look at some uh, some facts. Um, the ODE solvers, the functional components, uh, we have a function uh, which is to used to evaluate the right hand side f of t and y, you know, y is if it could be a vector. And the stepper, which is the integra uh, integration of scheme, for instance, the uh, explicit or implicit uh, method, and uh, the Jacobian of a fun uh, the right hand side function. In the case when the implicit methods are employed, and there might be a need to compute the Jacobian at each time step. So three functional components are uh, uh, needed for a ODE solver conceptually. So let's take a, a first uh, look at the uh, uh, boost ODE int library. Uh, in this example, we're solving uh, the famous Lorentz system, which uh, for those of you, uh, if you're familiar with the Lorentz system, if you look at the chart, uh, <coughs> is the face, uh, a face portrait, you will see those uh, nice uh, uh, butterfly patterns. <coughs> so for solving this Lorentz system, uh, on the right-hand side, the, the C++ code, we define a, a function, a Lorentz, uh, which contains uh, three lines, which is the uh, direct translation from uh, the mathematical uh, equations. And then uh, we define another function, uh, right underscore Lorentz, which uh, just uh, uh, outputs the, the result uh, at each uh, time step. And then in the, in the driver routine, the main function, the main function only contains two lines. Um, we just simply call the interface integrate, and we pass uh, the Lorentz equation and the function as a parameter, and also the output function as a parameter into this uh, uh, interface integrate, then uh, we can solve the, the ODE. So this uh, uh, boost the numerical ODE int uh, library has a C++ interface, and the user uh, users are to, to provide a right-hand side, right-hand side function, excuse me, and, and a Jacobian if necessary. And, and also it contains a number of integration schemes called the steppers, including a multi-step and uh, adaptive uh, step control schemes, which is uh, good for solving uh, some uh, 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 problems that uh, uh, implicit the methods are, are wanted. And uh, it, it can be a use to solve uh, uh, step ODEs. The, uh, the second example, uh, this is an Intel ODE solver. Uh, we're solving a, a step problem. Uh, the step problem is defined on the, uh, uh, the upper right the corner, uh, if you can see that on the, on the slide. And in this uh, example, we define the two functions. So one is the right-hand side function, f, and also we define a, the Jacobian, uh, because we're using an uh, implicit method. And I haven't seen uh, much uh, mentioning of how well the, OD, uh, the boost uh, uh, ODEN works for stiff problems. There are found some uh, recommendations to uh, Intel uh, ODE solvers for stiff problem. By the way, it, it seems the uh, the Intel ODE uh, uh, solvers seems to be uh, developed by, by yeah, the Russian mathematicians. Um, a little over uh, ten years ago, the Intel created a research center in a, an institute of uh, Russian Acad Academy of Science. Uh, they moved to some of the uh, math uh, mathematics development there, and despite its uh, primitive looking, this Intel ODE solver, in fact. It's a sophisticated device that has many switches for users to play with. For instance, uh, the argument I par uh, shown in uh, in the source code within the do loop now on the right hand side, it has 128 options to play with. So uh, the Intel ODE solver. Uh, uh, is a collection of very uh, sophisticated uh, uh, ODE solvers, and uh, it is it is said that 
very efficient, uh, effective for solving uh, 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 these. And there are other uh, uh, solvers as well. The Sundial uh, is a, a suite of uh, nonlinear uh, differential algebraic uh, equation solvers. Uh, it contains uh, several packages. Uh, you can look it up uh, at the, this URL uh, on the slide. Uh, now the next the PDE solvers. So unlike the uh, ODEs, uh, which have a quite a unique standard of form, and ODEs, uh, PDEs comes with the various forms, and there are many uh, uh, general purpose uh, ODE, uh, PDE solvers out there. And path C, again, is perhaps one of the most uh, used tools for, for practically solving uh, a PDEs based the problems on shared and the distributed memory uh, systems. Now, uh, uh, let's take a look at the, the numerical solution of the nonlinear equations again. Uh, we uh, just saw that a couple of uh, minutes ago. Uh, they can come from the discretization of the initial value problems or boundary uh, problems as well. So suppose we have a nonlinear system. And here, x uh, is a vector. And we will end up uh, solving a linearized problem. And this will be solved using a, a quite a, a subspace method. And to use the path C to solve a nonlinear system, we need, at a minimum, the following storage in the function uh, uh, evaluation. So first, we need a, a storage to, to host the, the solution vector. And we need a right-hand side uh, to evaluate the, the, uh, the equation uh, f. And also, we need a Jacobian uh, about that. And uh, <coughs> optionally, a path C lets user, uh, users define the Krylov uh, uh, methods and the preconditioners. Here's an uh, uh, example. We uh, want to uh, take uh, 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 look at some of the details. And if you're familiar with the MPI, you will see the familiar traits of the design in, this, uh, in the function calls. So at the beginning, uh, we uh, initialized the path C solving uh, environment at the line 49. And uh, followed by the, uh, the calls to MPI, uh, two MPI functions. And then at the next block, we create a Nonlinear solution object SNEC uh, through the call to SNEC create. And then we'll create a, a vector objects. And the next, uh, on the right hand side, the right hand, on, the, on the right column, we'll create the matrix uh, uh, objects to store the, uh, the Jacobian. And then the next, uh, we uh, uh, get some options from a command line, and uh, the next from the lines 106 to 118, we uh, get uh, the default uh, quite off sub subspace uh, method object KSP, and uh, and the preconditioning uh, object the PC from the solving environment. Uh, next, we start solving. After we uh, install, uh, we set the, the nonlinear equation uh, object SNES, -N -E uh, we start solving the equation by calling uh, SNE solve. So just by the one function call, it will solve the nonlinear equation uh, behind the scene. So in a summary, again, uh, you don't have to worry about the details of the, 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 the code. Let, let me uh, just uh, summarize the, uh, some of the, uh, the, uh, the key features. First, the PETC uses the following uh, key uh, opaque uh, objects, the solver object, the uh, Krylov subspace uh, uh, method object 
and the preconditioning object. These are the three key objects uh, you need to define. And uh, PASI also defines the opaque uh, uh, matrix and the vector types. And uh, the user will define the, uh, the functions and the computational grid, and perhaps to, to provide the, uh, the functions and the Jacobian. And then uh, PASI will take over and solve the uh, nonlinear equation by calling SNES solve. Okay, so that's uh, uh, just a few lines to summarize the, uh, uh, the complicated uh, source code. So let's uh, let's move on to uh, a fast uh, <coughs> Fourier transform f of t. Fast Fourier transform is another fundamental numerical procedure. Uh, the only factor we would like to recommend if you're uh, doing an FFT and a shark net as the FFTW, it has a C++ and the Fortran interface, uh, interfaces is installed on uh, all the shark net systems. It is uh, used by MATLAB, Octave, and R. Uh, so you know that if a package is used by many packages and by uh, many other people, you know that's good. So here's a, a very simple example. It's a one-dimensional signal, pro <coughs> signal processing using FFTW. Uh, the input signal is a two sinusoidal wave uh, with uh, corrupted by a, a noise from uh, uh, a normally uh, distributed, uh, which is a, a, a normally distributed. And we take that as an input, and then the output through f of t gives us the uh, amplitude in the frequency uh, domain. As we can see in the in the second the second graph, we see two spikes uh, corresponding to the two frequencies at the 50 and 120 uh, in the input. Okay, so that's the, the signal processing. So we. Uh, uh, we do some analysis analysis through uh, FFT. So, uh, how do we do this in, uh, using FFT? Here is a uh, uh, the example is Fortran. We intentionally put the Fortran and the MATLAB code side up, side by side to show the similarity and the simplicity of the Fortran code. So, on the on the left hand side, uh, I just pay attention to the two uh, uh, two lines in red and first line. We just create a vector of signals, uh, which is two sinusoidal waves plus a, a, a vector of uh, uh, random numbers. And on the right hand side, uh, corresponding lines in the Fortran uh, resembles exactly the uh, MATLAB uh, counterpart. So we create a vector X uh, uh, made of uh, two sinus sinusoidal. Uh, waves plus a noise a vector, which is returned from a call to uh, uh, ren n just above that line. We'll come to that uh, later when we come to uh, uh, random number generators. And then we call three functions, uh, f of t. f of t a plan, and we pass in uh, uh, a few uh, uh, parameters, x, which is the input, and the y is the output, and the n is the, the dimension, is the length of uh, the input array. And the plan here is an object, it's an opaque object. Again, just, uh, this is the, the modern design uh, uh, of the numerical uh, software packages that uh, uses the data obstruction. The last uh, argument, uh, FFW underscore estimate, is a flag. That tells the uh, the function uh, the FFTW plan to create a plan uh, to uh, uh, to discover the, the hardware uh, and to decide to choose the best the uh, best plan. So FFTW, by the way, uh, involves the two stages. One is to uh, figure out the, what the hardware and the architect and the, and the followed by the actual. Uh, computation with optimized uh, this uh, selection of uh, her, uh, the algorithm for the targeted hardware. 
So after we create a plan, which is an object, we pass this uh, plan into the call to execute. So we just ask you execute uh, FHTW. And then uh, after that, we just destroy the plan. So we get the, the transform. Okay. So very uh, uh, simple interface to use. Uh, here is kind of summary of uh, how FFTW can be used. Uh, FFTW has come with uh, uh, a number of interfaces, and, but uh, they all share the, pretty much the same, uh, same format, FFTW, a plan, and a type, dimension, and followed by execute, and followed by destroy after you're done. That you should dis uh, destroy the, the object, and the, the, the memory allocated for the object. Plan. Okay. And there are a number of uh, function calls for different uh, 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 types of uh, FFTs, uh, uh, whether it's from the real to, to complex, from complex to complex, one-dimensional, two-dimensional, three-dimensional, so on and so forth. You got to look up the, uh, the, the manual, the references for details. So next, uh, let's move on to uh, uh, random number generators. In the, in the FFT example, we create an array of ran, uh, a normally distributed random numbers. Now we let's take a look at how it is uh, uh, implemented. It can be implemented. Two packages to, to recommend. One is the GNU uh, Scientific Library. Uh, it has a, a collection of high quality uh, random number generators. Yes, uh, over 60 random number generators and over 40 uh, different uh, distributions. And it is very easy to, to use, uh, callable from C, C++, and a 4 -chat. Another um, random number generator for parallel environment is uh, SPRNG or Spring. And it works with uh, MPI, and uh, currently it has only uniform distribution only. Now, for the uh, GNU Scientific Library, uh, as I said, it has over 60 high-quality uh, random number generators. And also, uh, it provides uh, uh, over 40 random uh, uh, function calls that you can get for different uh, distribution, which is a very uh, handy. So you don't have to build uh, a specific distribution uh, based on uh, uniform uh, distribute random numbers on your own. Here's an example. Uh, we go back to the details of implementation of the MATLAB equivalent of Fortran subroutine RNB and that we called in the FFT uh, uh, W example. So on the right hand side, uh, on the top we define an interface uh, rand n, which returns a array of normally distributed uh, uh, random numbers. And then the bottom block uh, shows the actual C code, uh, which calls uh, GNU Scientific Library to get the normal distribution or a Gaussian distribution uh, with a variance or standard deviation 1. Okay. This is how we uh, uh, we implement this uh, uh, function. Uh, you can take a look at it here. Uh, so the procedure is to uh, to define a random number generator type T, and then you allocate a space uh, for this type, and you generate a again, you generate a opaque op object R, which is uh, uh, a handler for the random number generators. And, the, and the, in, the, uh, in the loop, we just repeatedly call uh, GSL uh, random number function that generate the Gaussian distribution, GSL uh, uh, ran Gaussian to generate an uh, array of uh, random numbers from uh, uh, Gaussian distribution. Uh, here's a summary of the spring uh, that uh, you can use if you are using a, a, a parallel, a, using a Monte Carlo simulation in a parallel environment, and you might want to use a spring T to generate 
uh, multiple streams in parallel that are not uh, correlated. Okay. And the spring, by the way, uh, this package is installed on our shark net uh, as well. And here uh, is an example of the use of the uh, uh, spring in C++ and, and a Fortran. Uh, and also, it's, uh, it's very easy to, to use. Uh, this is in the uh, parallel environment, so uh, we need to call MPI. They initialize the MPI environment. After that, uh, we just call, uh, we initialize uh, Spring by calling an init a Spring, and then uh, we uh, use a loop to generate uh, array of a uh, sequence of uh, random numbers. And among the, uh, the MPI processes, these the sequence of uh, random numbers are not correlated. This is the the strength of this. Uh, uh, this package. Okay. Uh, lastly, let's uh, uh, take a look at uh, some of the uh, the multiple purpose libraries. Uh, AMD uh, core mathematical libraries, or ACML, uh, installed on a SharkNet. It, it, it contains class and APAC routine, f of t, and the random number generators. Uh, these are the key components of this library. Uh, on the shark net, we have uh, uh, different versions of AMD compiled using different compilers. And the next is the Intel uh, kernel library, uh, which is the, the default mathematical libraries uh, on our system. Uh, it contains not only uh, the linear algebra uh, libraries, but also some other uh, things as well. For instance, um, F of T, uh, PDE solvers, optimization, data fitting, and uh, arbitrary uh, arithmetic, uh, arithmetic uh, functions. It has both the C++, uh, C++ and the Fortran uh, interfaces. Uh, another library is uh, IMSL, uh, the International Mathematical uh, Software Library. This is a commercial library. It's been around over 30 years. and. Uh, uh, it is on the shark net, and this, uh, it's not, uh, uh, we do not support it. Uh, we put it on shark net as is because we didn't pay uh, the support, uh, the annual support fee, uh, so uh, it can be used as is. But it just uh, it won't get that much uh, technical support. And it contains some sophisticated, uh, well-tested uh, uh, mathematical li and statistical libraries in particular. And also, we have a, a numerical uh, algorithms group, or NAIC, uh, NAIC uh, library. Uh, it has some uh, uh, unique features. It contains optimization uh, libraries, special functions, and also some application libraries, such as the option pricing formula, uh, which is kind of uh, interesting. And uh, GNU scientific library, uh, we've seen uh, it, it is a collection of a bit of everything. It, it contains a com complex numbers, random number generators, uh, Monte Carlo uh, uh, methods, and uh, data fitting. Uh, and many others. Now, it has only currently a C++, C++ interfaces only, but it's, in some cases, this is not too hard to to call Fortran. And uh, you can also uh, look at on the on the internet. Uh, there are a number of other uh, uh, packages available. In particular, look at some packages uh, on the Netlib. If you look at the Netlib. And you will see a, a, a collection, huge collection of uh, packages. Patsy, uh, in particular, that as I mentioned, that is the, a tool, uh, a sophisticated tool for solving a variety of, uh, of problems. It has a C, C++, and the Fortran interfaces. And uh, it is very, it has the evident traces of C C++ thinking, and it works on a multi uh, processors, uh, 
you know, threaded and uh, the MPI environment. And uh, the, the core part of uh, PASC is it uses uh, uh, the cryo subspace method and uh, preconditioner. And PASC can be used with other packages, along with other packages, for instance, to, uh, to compute eigenvalue problems with the slab C. A quick look at the packages uh, needed for Pat C. Uh, I just uh, highlight them in uh, in red. Uh, you can see it contains a spar. It, it, it wants a sparse. It wants a, a super LU uh, package. Uh, it might want to uh, use a hybrid, a scalar pack, and uh, and and others. And hybrid is a library for solving, by the way, for solving large and sparse and linear systems. Uh, common quite uh, uh, off subspace based method, and uh, it uses MPI. So uh, for further readings, I just list a few things there. You can find more information on the internet. Uh, if you have something uh, you would like to recommend, by all means, let us know. It may also contribute. Uh, your experience and share your ideas or thoughts by adding information to our help wiki. And the help wiki is meant to be a community wiki so we can help each other.